Thank you. Um, we are back uh, live in House to Destroy Committee, and we are continuing our work on H546. Uh, and we have new language um, regarding a report back. And then we also have a, um, a visual that Representative uh, um showed us earlier and has now um, emailed to the committee. So, Representative Christie Coach, go ahead. So, Mad Madam Chair, maybe the resolution to the Pew recommendation is in our miscellaneous ed, I mean, not ed, oh geez, my mind shifted very strangely all of a sudden, but uh, our miscellaneous judiciary bill that we put a uh, recommendation to the data group within the judiciary to extract that data. And see, that way we know where who we're asking and we know it has to be done but we could do that through the miscellaneous judiciary bill and then we would be directing someone to fulfill the recommendation of the pew because it's going to be valuable information and if the division picks up that data because it'll be being disaggregated within the new system that we've been funding for the last few years, you know, in judiciary, you know, it's a win-win all the way. And it kind of feeds back into what Ken was talking about is it's not duplication. You know, if, if the person who has the hand on the button being the judiciary pulls that data, you know, like for us, then it's just a matter of the data sharing piece for the division to put it up on the uh, dashboard. So anyways, that uh, that's just a thought. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. I always have thought I'm, I'm supportive of that. And I think we would maybe just want to hear some testimony mm -hmm. from the judiciary mm -hmm. about how accessible the data is, or because maybe mm -hmm. the recommendation would be more like we'd ask them to come back with just yeah. some report that's that tells us what it would take to be able to to share demographic data about you know tenant landlord from the tenant landlord docket and the um and the debt collection dockets but i i'm supportive of keeping this bill as focused and clean and clear as possible and then but not losing track of that issue and considering right. it in the context of the miscellaneous judiciary bill. I, I think that's a great suggestion, Coach. Great, thank you. All right, Eric, so you can make a note of that one. It's great that he, he keeps track of that. He's got one of those map things, you know, too. <laughs> I think is, the Senate is going to start it, right? I think that's what we decided. No, it's actually starting in this committee. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> We've got one provision. Okay. And so hey, all right. Hopefully you have a list. How, how does the bill look? <laughs> uh, well, that's exactly what it is, a list so far. <laughs> so the, it has, I haven't got to the drafting yet. So hopefully, uh, it's funny, it is on my list of things to do in the next take a look at in the next week or so. Okay, all right, well, yeah, let's uh, remind me to put that on our schedule. Um, even sure. It's just for you to talk about your list. Um, okay, great. All right, so then why don't we look at uh, the language? Um, we do have it on our um, meeting page. It's been emailed to us. I, I told Amber that if I'm, um, Right now, not to print anything out, but if people want to see it printed, maybe, you know, I think just that page. Um, but we are on page, is it going to be four? Page? Which, which draft is it? This 3.1? Yep. Thank you. Is it, is it going to be on page four? Uh, yes. Okay. So it's page four, uh, lines three, 
through five, and um, Eric has highlighted it. Thank you very much, Eric. Sure. Um, so I'll give folks yeah, a minute or so to read it, and then any feedback on this language. <clears throat> I have one question. <clears throat> I'm sorry, where, what page is it on? Page four. Page four. <clears throat> Eric. I'm looking at the right. Um, so uh, the What's report that? may include uh, an operational assessment of the division structure. And then uh, the, the, the last part is necessary adjustments. Would, would those two things uh, encompass any amendments to the, to the bill or at that, at that point to, to the act? Uh, what, for example, what sort of thing are you thinking of, Representative Bird? You mean? Uh, well, I was just thinking of the uh, the policy on, on how the uh, um, the board is going to work. Would would that would, would would that language allow us to make changes to or to look at the possible changes to uh, the way the board operates? Yeah, I would say so. That comes under structure. Yeah, okay, that, I thought so, but I just wanted to verify it. Thank you. Sure. That looks good. Yeah. And other, other thing I'd point out is that that sentence doesn't in any way limit the previous sentence. So right. under the previous sentence, the the division can include any recommendations it thinks are appropriate, the way I read that. This is just putting in there something specific because this is something you really want to kind of have them think about. But it's, but it's not exclusive to anything else that the committee could include within that first, its report within that first sentence. Right, right. So Barbara, what do you, what do you think? I am looking at it, it looks, I'm good with that. Okay. Anybody not good? I like that part. I think it's good because it also allows to assess, is it too much, was it too little, you know, right. all directions. Right. There's breathing room there. Yeah. All right, well, well, great. Well, thank you, Barbara, for bringing this up and thank you, Eric, just uh, and every, Anybody else who help with this? So, okay. So, I think we're good. I think in terms of let's hold off on voting today. Um, we have coaches uh, chart uh, for folks to refer to, and um, we'll, we'll try to fit it. We'll look at the schedule, you know, there tomorrow. And again, as we as we think about this bill. What I, what I think is important for committee members to think about is that um, we're, looking at, we're looking at the policy in, in terms of creating this new, this new entity. Um, this has been work that has been um, in, in progress. There's a real identified need and that need was confirmed by the Council of State Governments as part of Justice Reinvestment II. And, um, and so we have, bless you, as a policy committee, that our role is, is, is weighing in on, on the policy that is um, put into place by creating this, this entity in terms of how many positions, is it a, you know too much money, not enough money, anything like that. That's really up to the um, to our appropriations committee to, um, to, you know, to, to sort that out. So, um, so. Yeah, and I certainly understand that. But, um... So it's just going through my mind. Uh, I probably heard the answer at some point over the last 12 years, or maybe not. Maybe I should ask the question. But so, and I understand that we do policy. So I, I guess my question would be why do we put money in there? Well, that was based on Martin when um, well, and, and the reason I bring that up is it just kind of um, muddies the water in a sense as far as. Um, you know, people's thought process, and I can totally understand it. I mean, it's part of my thought process too. And of course, Ken brings it up, brought it up. Um, 
because if we're just looking at policy and then we let the money committees take care of you know, all the money issues with it, right. um, it, it just seems like it would be uh, um, e easier for us at, at our uh, cleaner bill uh, dealing with what we deal with. <clears throat> just, yeah. just wanted to yeah. throw it out there. Martin, do you want to? Well, I, I know that's a good, no, that's a really interesting, good question. I mean, um, yeah, I'm trying to think about like where else, like other bills we've had. Do they come to us with, with numbers? Do they come to us with positions, or do we, or are they silent and we just know? Yeah, I mean, not that the, that, that, you know, as a, you know, the bill is being built. Not that the numbers couldn't be somewhere, um, but you know, kind of in the background, I guess. Um, Instead of you know taking this bill and throwing it at them and say here you figure it all out. I mean, if it's easier for say to to have some of the preliminary work done for them, right, right. Um, but does it does it have to be in the bill? So, yeah, that's that's interesting because sometimes we maybe take it and not have the numbers in there, but then had a fiscal note. Mm -hmm. um, and Celine, I didn't, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, I just said I think it's I've seen it done both ways. Where sometimes right. we. Yeah, just have the fiscal note. Sometimes the number is really clear. Trans I mean, I guess the in favor of it is just the transparency of but when but when you okay. but when you have a bill like this, <clears throat> the number has to be part of the process. So right. It this like is, it would be in, in the appropriations. It's not, yeah, but still, you're looking for, we're always looking for uh, to try to get something certainly like this to come out of committee that we're all agreeing upon, right? I mean, it, it, it's, it's pretty important to, in my mind, there's some that just isn't going to happen. This is one that would be nice if it did. And what I'm saying is it's much too broad. It's, it's, there's too many unanswered questions, too many entities that are not working together. And it's like, how do we shorten up that scope? Somehow or another, this has become so complicated and so complex, I can't wrap my head around it. It shouldn't be this difficult. And I know what I just said makes no sense to any, anybody in this room, and that's fine. But it honestly should not be this complex. I, I hear you. And when we and when we go out of committee, it's like every time we go on the floor, and you don't see it as much as what we do on the minority side, but we're always looking, even on your bills, on 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 the majority side. You're always looking what that vote is that comes out of committee. I mean, it's important. It's important. It, it weighs on my mind big time when I'm voting on something because I'm going to vote how I think is right. It, sure. yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. So, I, I think, no, I understand that. And, and I think it would... Um, trying to be as transparent as possible in this bill by putting the best figure that we have right now, recognizing that appropriations uh, more likely the way the appropriations is decrease it, but you don't know. I mean, um, but, but being very transparent for just the reason that, that Ken is talking about this, that um, yeah, yeah, it is a policy decision, but there's money attached to it. And, and it's tough to make that, you know, if you're really worried about the money, that's tough to, I'm sure, weigh the importance of the policy versus the money part without knowing precisely what the money part is. I understand that part. You know, I understand, but but we're trying to get into the ballpark at least to be able to make that uh, that that call. Uh, so that that's kind. Of, I mean, I think it's important in this bill to have made it clear that you know this is an investment. The other part that's un which is unfortunate is there's this other uncertainty that's out there. Uh, it, it's it, it is this is the concept of this bill is that it's reinvestment on money that we're saving because of these other policies that we've undertaken through justice reinvestment. Exactly. Yeah. The whole idea is that we save money in some places, we reinvest it elsewhere. 
And this specifically in, in the governor's budget address noted that. Uh, he said that, you know, he mentioned the, uh, the justice reinvestment too, and how savings were being reinvested in among other things, data, I don't think he said data initiative, but he said data uh, gathering. So, so unfortunately, I, I, I've asked the Joint Fiscal Office if they have any kind of figures as far as the justice reinvestment savings. And it's, it's relatively hard to tie. They are looking in the budget to see where the savings are uh, and whether the budget from the administration notes these savings are probably in the DOC budget, but that data isn't available to us right now. And it may not be because it's really hard to, to connect the fact that we do have a lot fewer inmates out of state, saving a lot of money on that, to directly what the justice reinvestment was versus COVID policies. So we're probably not going to get a clear answer anytime soon on what that savings is to help us. But that is the concept is that we are reinvesting money that we are, we know we're saving uh, into an initiative such as this. Um, and so Ken, it is um, for you, <coughs> it would be different if there, if there wasn't an appropriation? No, because uh -huh. okay. no, because we don't know this, this, we, so I, I, I'm looking at it as a business. You do not want this to fail. This is too important. If you were to go and say we were operating this as a business and you were walking into a bank and you had a million dollars, which, right? And you go and say, okay, this is what I plan to do. But if this doesn't work, I've thrown out a, I've thrown away a million dollars, which we already have money that, that the governor has already said he has. He has, Susanna has uh, her position. She's filled one. I don't believe she's filled the other position. We have a huge problem with workforce. We have a huge problem with, with collecting data. We have a, a huge problem with the data, all the data working together. And we need to fix we need to fix those problems first. So, so even if you took the money out of this, out of this, what's in this committee, I still wouldn't vote for this bill the way it is right now. There's too many unknowns. This, this bill, this, the way this is drafted right now, and, and now I sound, sound like a politician, I, I don't like that, but this bill is drawn up and it, it's going to make us all not look good. And I don't want that to happen. I want this to, I want this to pass and make sense for everybody. And maybe I, I don't think I'm wrong here. I'm quite confident I'm right. We want, this needs to, to be set up more direct, a lot less unknowns than what's out there and a lot more um a lot more guidance than what we have uh barbara so ken i don't know if your comments are based on something that i said but my comment was not that um we're putting a lot of money at this and we don't know if this is gonna be successful. My comment was, this is tricky. Um, it's tricky. It's not like a straightforward, like I would not go into a bank with, I mean, this isn't a business that we're setting up. It's a government function and talk about failure. I mean, look at the data that we looked at the other day of um, racial disparity. So I think you're right. We all want to get at the bottom of that. And in order to do that, we're going to need to get data collected from a bunch of different places and um, crunched by people that know what the heck they're doing so that we can make smart policy decisions based on um, but, but very targeted to where we can see the problems are. So I think it's not that we're presenting this as 
well, we have this business plan and we're not sure it's going to work, but we'll come back to you. It's, this is tricky. Our state has not been the best data collector, but we have this terrible problem that um, makes our state very unwelcoming and hospitable for um, people of color and um, others who are different. And so we are putting together a sound plan and we're gonna be dogging it to make sure that it's meeting its targets, that it has what it needs, that if there are barriers or lack of um, the appropriate resources or training that we're gonna get to the bottom of it so that we're not just throwing money in the air, but we're trying to address these inequities. So, so just to clarify, I did not direct anything towards you at all. I don't like the bill. I don't like how it, and, and no offense to anybody, how they've tried to drop it. Everybody's done their best, work, worked it all they want. This <laughs> thing, I don't care if you're a person of color or who you are, doesn't exactly draw anybody to this state. Our, we're not increasing, we're decreasing. Maybe some of that's because what it costs to live in this state. So we can go back and forth on that all day long. I, I, I don't, this is, this is not a good sound business um, bill to send anywhere. So, and there's nothing personal on anybody. It's just, it's, that's not how I do stuff. And however it was done before I got here, well, whatever, but that's, it needs to be worked on. We don't even have, we don't even have the workforce to deal with this properly right now. And uh, I, uh, I'll stop there. Yes. Um, appreciate your, your thoughts, Ken, and um, just wanna offer, a, I guess I just feel differently about the bill. It seems to me it's um, the result of several years worth of very thoughtful work from our DAP and other stakeholders to, to get this to the point where it is. And it seems to have broad support, seems to have the support of the administration. Um, and to me seems to be well constructed as a, as a next step. Um, so I'm not, I'm feeling, a, I'm, I'm not, I'm just not quite understanding the analysis that it's, it's not sort of set up to succeed. To me, it seems thoughtful and well constructed and just wanted to offer a, an alternate view, I suppose. Yeah, thank but you. Appreciate the thoughts. And it will go to government operations, my understanding. And so, so they have that that lens of <clears throat> governmental entities and yeah. Just to be clear, I I didn't say it's not thoughtful. It's very thoughtful. Yeah, not trying to not I apologize. I felt felt like I was putting words in your mouth. Not not <clears throat> trying to do that at all. I guess well constructed. This is just uh, <laughs> this is just uh, the um, you know this bill. We all know what it's all about, and it's. And it's people are going to run in charge with it and accuse and whatever, whatever, and all this stuff. I just want it tweaked a little. I would like to see it tweaked a little bit more. But. Well, again, it will go to government operations, it will go to appropriations. So there will be opportunities to get, <clears throat> yes, especially government operations. Um, yes. If I might. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion on this bill and this may astonish some of you, but my, my problem with the bill is that it doesn't seem to be inclusive enough. And I've had this discussion with singular members as to, and I'm looking at the graph that was presented before us is bringing exactly to the forefront what, what I was questioning. Now there's a bill and a rough draft for another division of, and my original thoughts were that this division should be an all encompassing division We've all had 
numerous discussions on the lack of data, whether it's racial data, LGBTQ data plus, all the data. We need an office of statistics and data gathering, which covers everything in the state of Vermont. We don't need 12 different divisions from EPA to racial to L. <clears throat> I would rather see us look at this as, okay, we need an office of statistics and data gathering. And it, it's all encompassing for everything that we're concerned about that we've talked about several times throughout the state of Vermont. This seems to be uh, singular in my mind as to one direction that we're going. It should all be inclusive. So that's, that's what I'm wrestling with right now so we don't come up with 12 different divisions. Here. That's a great point. And that would make everybody shop a lot easier. Yeah. Right. So <clears throat> I, I definitely understand your, your viewpoint on that, Bob. Uh, except that you know we've been talking about data for a while, and to wait for there to be a statewide data gathering function, we'll be waiting a lot longer. And this this is going to this is probably I have to say this is probably one of the hardest areas of uh, or more difficult areas for gathering data because we're talking to a lot of different agencies law enforcement, state's attorneys, defender's office, the courts, <clears throat> Department of Corrections, uh, various uh, justice, uh, restorative justice entities, all these entities. So this one's pretty complicated. And, and we're hopefully establishing a model of how to in fact get this done and gathering the kind of data that we need. And so, and it, it's not gonna end up being just racial data. They're, we're gonna find differences in geographic uh, equities is, for one. You know, maybe not LGBTQ plus because uh, in the criminal justice system, we may not want to be collecting that information in the criminal justice. Uh, you know, there's viewpoints about that. But putting that aside, uh, we have to say, my view is that, all right, well, we either do the whole thing, which I don't see that any sign that that's going to get done, uh, or we start somewhere and we build on it. And, and I think that this offers a really good opportunity because of how much work, as, as Selena mentioned, that RDAP has been doing and other stakeholders, <clears throat> how much work they've been doing, this is a good starting point on how to best collect and aggregate, da uh, aggregate data, or maybe aggravate data uh, in the criminal or in, in the state government. So I don't think we can do it all at once. I think it's a great start. And Martin, can you remind me, um, H317 or 316, which are, you know, the Seven, yeah. yeah um, wasn't that modeled after Connecticut? Yes. Don't they have an office of? Don't they have something more comprehensive? That I, I I don't recall, but I know that in past testimony, this very issue has come yeah. up with yeah. uh, with Aton, uh, Doctor uh, Nesrud Logan. I'm sorry, I'm terrible at this late day uh, in the day of uh, any event, <clears throat> Doctor Aton. <laughs> That he addressed this very issue and, and, and saying that, you know, this is something he's broadly interested in getting the data, but let's get started. Let's move on this. And this should establish a really good model on how to do this. There's going to be a lot of work on getting systems to talk. There's going to be a lot of work on data definition so that systems can talk and track people. <coughs> um, so uh, that's my view. I'd say to, um, even prior to RDAP, looking at this issue, I think it was three years ago now, maybe Martin was my co-sponsor. We introduced about a number of us in this committee working with the ACLU that was kind of that bigger, right. more inclusive, like let's get all the data and all the systems and the feedback, we took some testimony on it, as I recall, and the feedback really was kind of like, let's narrow, let's let's narrow and start smaller and more incrementally. And I think then the bills that Coach and Martin have introduced are kind of the natural evolution of that feedback. To... Isn't how that, is that how Susanna got here? Was, was the starting point, was the building of this? That was a different bill. Huh? That, was a di that was a different bill. But, it, but it's but it's still on the on the on the on the racial building the racial statistics and all that stuff, right? She was 
who's hired as part of a broader bill on racial equity and establishing establishing a director of racial equity within the government. But I think that's a, a much broader charge than statistic than looking at statistics. I, yeah, and I think that I think part of uh, the creation of the, that office there is a uh, a mandate or or I don't know if it's a mayor shell uh, uh, that the director is supposed to be gathering data, but there was absolutely nothing provided for that work to get done. Exactly. And, and this is to provide a structure. And that's what we've been working on. RDAT's been working on for three years. This provides the structure to get what that office is supposed to be doing. Yes, it doesn't gather it everywhere, but it, but it's a structure for us to get started on gathering it. Probably the, you know, one of the more important areas where we're seeing uh, these kind of disparities in, 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 in Vermont. So, um, so. Barbara, then we're going uh, to let we'll adjourn and oh, take it out. That was, that was an old hand. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. No, no worries. All right, well, thank you, everybody. And I think it's been important and helpful discussion. Mm -hmm.